Hello, today we're going to look at the Azure AD templates for creating conditional access policies. So this is quite a fairly new feature. So I thought we'd just jump on a quick video and uh, go through some of, well, setting these up and having a play and see what we can do. So you can see from the screen, we're in the Azure AD portal. We're gonna jump into uh, security, conditional access. So at the moment we've no policies. So if we look up here now, we have we can create a policy uh, manually, which we're not going to do, or we can create one from templates. So there's 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 a there's a typical template out there for your best practice standards for conditional access to help us Microsoft have bundled that in into the portal now. So we'll just jump in here and we'll look at some of those uh, templates and we'll get some deployed. So if we click on here, so we're going to select a template category. So we can either protect, protect identities or a device. So what we'll do first, we'll look at identities. So we'll see what we've got there. So looking at this, so we've got we've got typical require MFA. Uh, we've got some other useful ones such as blocking legacy authentication as well. Require MFA for all users. Require MFA for guests. So what's quite nice with this template view, you can create each an individual policy uh, fairly quickly and easily wizard driven basically which makes thing makes life so much easier so what we'll do we'll go ahead and we will create an admin one and see what that looks like so if we want we can uh, suggest a name for the policy here we'll, we'll just accept the default but if you've got a specific naming convention you can select that and click and, uh, and amend that so what we'll do we'll stick this in report only mode as well this is a test tenant anyway so we're not going to break anything but it'll be, it'll be good to see what it looks like so we're happy happy with that so we'll click next so you can see here, it's given us uh, a lot of information on the uh, policy state, policy names, the included users. You can see what's quite nice as well, because where the actual defining admin, it excludes us by default. Well, that's one thing to remember in the future, we'll, we'll have to exclude that. And we'll go ahead and create policy. So you can see how easy that is to create an MFA policy for admins, a uh, couple of clicks and we've done. So if we jump into that, I'll have a look here. So you can see here, uh, we've got the policy and it's applying to 14 directory roles. So these are the directory roles, Microsoft team as admin roles. If you wanted to, you could amend this and select them all. Uh, we're filtering to all cloud apps. And we've got a one grant control, which as we know will be requirement fair. And as simple as that is the policies created. When, we, when we're happy to enable this, we would uh, change that to one and click save, and then it should be good to go. So what we'll do now, we'll just jump back to uh, create another template and see what other things we can do. So let's have a look at this template option here. So what I would probably be doing is we, we would be creating them all. Uh, you might not necessarily be using the high risk user one because you need Azure DP2 for that. Uh, P1 is your MFA and things and conditional access is part of that P1 as well. Uh, any risky sign analysis has to, you can see here the premium two license. So what we're going to do here, we'll block legacy authentication and we'll click next. So you can see here, it gives us a brief overview of what it's going to do. Uh, and the included users, all users, is excluding us because we're the admin at the moment. Again, you need to remember to exclude that or remove that once you put this policy live or your account will be the weak, a weak point. We're filtering this to all apps and we'll discuss about these two when we jump into the, actually when we review the policy. So we'll go ahead and create that. So let's have a look at this legacy authentication policy here. So you can see we've got all users in included, we're excluding the temporary admin user I'm using on our test tenant, all cloud apps, one condition, so client apps. So these are two, these are the two client apps that Microsoft deem as legacy. So you see Active Sync there, Pop IMAP uh, I'm, uh, and SMTP. So those are the legacy clients. You do have to be careful if you've got things like copiers, printers and things that are out and about in the office and they're authenticated with 365, you still will have to um, allow that or change that mechanism. But as you can see up here, you've got an exclusion. You can exclude the user, but then you can create another policy that forces the, the logon only from a specific IP address. And you can see our grant control here is uh, block access. So it's a nice, simple policy, that one. So what we'll do, we'll just cancel that off and uh, jump back there. So what we'll, what we'll do next, we'll see what else we can have a look at. So some of the interesting ones I've been playing with recently are some of the devices because they're using the, the new device filters. So if we have a look at that, so let's have a look at the no persistent browser session. Anyone on an unmanaged device, basically, you can you re make sure the user has to re-log on when the browser's closed, etc. It'll time after an hour. So you can see it gives you a bit of nice information. Again, it's suggesting our name, we can change that as well. 
So if we click next, again, we've looked at this previously, you can see all this, uh, it's given us a nice overview of what we're doing, what probably the most interesting part of this particular policy is here. So this policy will only apply to unmanaged devices and the way this has been built into this policy is by using the filtered device section. So basically, if the trust type is not hybrid or it's not Azure, if it's not compliant, which means effectively enrolled in Intune uh, slash Azure rejoined, if it doesn't equal true, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force this policy on there. So if we create that and we'll just jump into that because that'll probably look a little bit easy to explain when we can actually see that. So if we jump in here, all users applied, obviously seeing that we're applying this to all cloud apps. If you ever need to change your cloud apps, you can, you can filter that there. The condition here, so we've got the filtered device policy. So this, yeah, this is a lot easier to read at this point here. So we're going to include filter devices. So trust type not equals hybrid and not equals true. So if the device is not compliant, which we know is an Azure AD joint device that is enrolled in Intune and has a compliance policy signed. So if it's not true, uh, ignore it, uh, which is what we want because we don't want these applying to what we class as trusted devices. And again, you can add additional filters here. So for example, if you've got a, a range of devices within the organization that you do also want to exclude uh, based on a custom attribute or something like that, you can. Uh, typically they would be Azure D joined or hybrid joined. So you can, well, you'd have to, so you can actually ev evaluate the, those device types. And if we just jump into our session control here, so you can see here, we've got the persistent browser session and never persistent, and we're gonna have a sign-in frequency of one hour as well. So basically, you can typically find this policy is quite nice because you find when you log into a portal, you might forget. And if people are logging in on a shared computer somewhere, their session might say persistent for for a long time. So this is a nice policy to, to enable and get out there pretty soon. As per all these templates, they are in report only mode. So you can monitor the report, the, the usage of these reports with the signing logs, uh, which we'll have a look at in a sec. So they're the three policies. You would you, you would have more, uh, and you can see you've got some great examples of policies here. They're not all relevant for uh, all organizations, uh, but some of the base policies such as MFA are quite useful. It, pe moving people away from Office 365 based MFA into conditional access massively simplify, simplifies it uh, because you no longer have to manually turn on MFA for users. You can be guaranteed that a new user will have to enroll in MFA and that just makes things so much easier. So for example, the scenario of we've created these policies, we've turned them on, well, we've put them in report mode, we want to monitor that. So if we jump into Azure Active Directory and we'll just scroll down to signing logs, you can then view the users here and you can then get an idea of uh, what's happening with this particular user. So this is where I logged in earlier. So we've got the conditional access not applied, but if we were to look at the reporting element of uh, of these the conditional access policies, we would click on here. We would get the particular policies listed and we'd also get the reports only. So if we were to log in after, the policy would be listed here and we'd get result and then we'll be able to evaluate that. And then when we're happy, go ahead and uh, enable those policies. That's it, a quick video on the some of the, the new templates today. If there's any questions, leave a comment uh, and uh, yeah, look out for the next one. See you soon.